Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, you're all very welcome to uh, our annual University Hospital Research Symposium. Uh, on behalf of the organising committee, uh, I would like to extend you all a very warm welcome uh, to Limerick, those who have travelled from uh, far and near and, and to the Strand Hotel. Uh, we have what I believe is a very exciting programme uh, for you today. <clears throat> um, I think the research that you will see from both our oral presenters and our poster presenters you know, uh, has a huge range of diversity and depth across a range of, of disciplines. Uh, we've had a huge response from the research community in the Midwest. We've had over 150 uh, submitted scientific abstracts. Uh, 18 of those will be oral presentations today, <clears throat> and the remainder, 130 or so, will be poster present, uh, presentations uh, just in, in the room next door. Just to tell you a little bit about the structure of the meeting today, we have three uh, scientific oral sessions uh, that will be chaired by myself and my colleagues. And interspersed with those, we have uh, four to five uh, our invited keynote speakers. Um, the, the, each uh, scientific session will cover a range of disciplines uh, that focus on uh, clinical uh, research, lifestyle research, uh, technology and health research, and so there is huge uh, diversity there. Uh, the poster presentations, as, as I said, will be next door, and I invite all of you to actually go out there during the tea breaks, during lunch, interact with uh, your colleagues, and uh, you know, in order to discuss with them you know, the, the importance of, of their research. Um, so this is an important meeting for University Hospital Limerick and for the wider Midwest. And you know, to show how much we're, we're kind of really focused on bringing this to the forefront, we have prizes you know, for each scientific session. Um, amongst you in the audience will be our panel of adjudicators. Some of them might be sitting next to you, and they will be adjudicating um, each session to identify the best oral presenter and the best poster presenter throughout. So it's an important day, uh, I think, for everyone. I mean, we really want to showcase the depth, the breadth uh, of research that is ongoing here in the, in, the, in the Midwest. I think it follows from a very successful inaugural meeting that we had last year. And really, I think, uh, you know, the, uh, we're out of the blocks, we're up and running, and we want to build on what we have done uh, over the last uh, 12 months. A uh, couple of housekeeping issues, um, you know, during the oral pre presentations, I, ask you all to, you know, uh, turn your mobile phones to, to silent. Uh, each presenter will have 10 minutes for the entire presentation. There's eight minutes for the uh, actual presentation, and then there's one to two minutes for questions. Uh, for those of you who are long-winded like myself, you will be extricated from the podium by one of my colleagues uh, down here on the right, so uh, we will he adhere very closely to those uh, timelines. <coughs> Uh, for the clinicians amongst you and those in the healthcare field, this is a CME accredited event. Uh, you won't get any CME credits unless you register outside. So again, very important to, to sign your name on the dotted line or there's no CME goodies for you. Um, towards the end of the day, we will have uh, the poster prize ceremony. I think it's important for all of you to stay for that time. And even more important, we have an evening dinner at 7 o'clock. Now, I hope and I know some of you have come for the science. There's a few of you who've come for a football match, a rugby match later on. But for those of you who've come for that, if you have the tickets, we will be showing the match live uh, up on the, on the top floor. So again, I want you to stay for dinner. So um, we're going to start off with our, uh, a welcome ad address from uh, our invited speaker, um, Professor Nilo Higgins. And in, Ire in clinical circles and in Ireland, and indeed internationally, he needs no introduction. Uh, Professor Nilo Higgins is the chair of UL Hospitals Trust, and uh, he's a native Limerick man. He actually went to college down the road, not too far from here. <clears throat> But he's been, he's been hugely successful, uh, both as a surgeon and as a professional over the last 30 years. Uh, he was the chair of surgery at University College Dublin and at St. Vincent's uh, University Hospital. 
Uh, he has a, a huge number of accolades, but I suppose in essence uh, he has contributed to breast cancer care in Ireland both as a surgeon, <clears throat> both as an advocate and both as a, a policy maker. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Professor Higgins uh, to the podium. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Stack, for that flattering introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Um, for me, it's a distinct and much appreciated honor to be invited by Professor Stack and his colleagues to make some opening remarks at this second annual research symposium of the University of Limerick Hospital Group. The high quality of the presentations at last year's inaugural meeting was a terrific demonstration of the energy and enthusiasm for research in UL and its hospitals and a tribute to the effort and enterprise of the organisers. This year, the organising team appears to have raised the ante in terms of the quality and the range of subjects studied. What I think is particularly impressive is the strength of the interdisciplinary and interprofessional collaboration so clearly reflected in the oral and the uh, poster presentations. Such a cooperative blending of diverse sets of expertise is characteristic of the University of Limerick, and the results of such combined efforts should be more widely appreciated and celebrated. At this symposium, we have representation from medicine and its many disciplines, from nursing, physiotherapy, pharmacy, psychology, sociology, life sciences, biomedical engineering, physics, statistics, educational studies, materials and surface science, biological science, and even, to its considerable credit, from the finance department of the UL Hospital. Abundant evidence exists from all countries where it has been sought that in medicine, research raises the quality of clinical care. Better care improves educational standards and good teaching stimulates research. It seems to me that this interlinked relationship is maintained whether the starting point is in research or clinical service or in teaching. The essential point is that each of these cardinal elements of professionalism drives and urges the other, not in a circle, but in an upward spiral towards uh, excellence. The relationship between the hospital and the university is of enormous benefit to both. It's well known that teaching of students inspires learning in teachers and reinforces their professional competence. You cannot be a good teacher of medicine, nursing or allied subjects unless you are up to date with developments in practice and applied research. The remarkable advances in medicine over a short time means that doctors who do not keep pace, and the same applies to nurses and others, if they don't keep pace they will be left behind. Simple as that. As uh, Professor Cyril Chandler has stated, medicine used to be simple, ineffective and relatively safe. Now it is complex, effective and potentially dangerous. The presence of students and the culture of sharing of knowledge with others improves patient care. The curiosity of fresh inquiry always stimulates debate, proposals and suggestions. And it is a pleasure to recognize that several of the presentations today will be by medical students. The influence of the university in the hospital also supports the idea of access to learning for all and develops opportunities among all members of staff. In so doing, it boosts morale and contributes to harmony within a complex institution. These factors also probably encourage retention of staff, reduce rates of absenteeism, and are likely to make work more productive and enjoyable. It is our intention in the UL Hospitals Group not just to consolidate or to strengthen 
the links between the university and the hospital, but to embed the principles of excellence and scholarship of the university into the very warp and weft and fabric of the hospital system. It's also our intention to have our hospital group perceived not just as places where you go when you're ill or when you're injured, but as a resource and a source of pride to the people of the region, having a public health role uh, of high standing, a powerful educational, including public educational function, and a focus of high competence, safety, uh, kindness and inquiry. It would be expected that the visiting speakers chosen by the organisers would all be experts, and indeed they are. But the choice of experts and the choice of topics for the principal speakers today, biomedical engineering, clinical outcomes research, clinical trials, and the future of health research in Ireland have been made with such care that they will, I think, become foundation blocks upon which our research will develop in the years ahead. I join Professor Stack in welcoming and thanking them. I also express gratitude to all those involved in the organisation of this exciting conference, and I congratulate all the presenters and researchers for having already established the annual research symposium at UL Hospitals as an important feature of the medical research landscape in Ireland. Finally, the University of Limerick is now firmly established as a powerhouse of innovation. You who work in or encourage research should be reminded of the importance of what you do. You stimulate our ambition. You foster our pride, encourage our youth, develop our resources, extend our influence, nourish our confidence, mould our future, design our destiny, sustain our society, and lead our country. Not bad for a day's work. You also provide a huge boost to human morale as you uncover truths and reveal laws that lift us up, more potent by far than the forces that drag us down. You deserve our thanks and our applause. Thank you. Thank you.